Well, I want to switch gears and talk about Dum Dum Dum, <laughs> the second book, yes. Bombay Blues. When I read Born Confused, um, I immediately, once I finished it, I immediately started yelling at my husband, what's next? What else has she written? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he said, um, I think, I think that's it for now. And I said, no. Um, and then this came out. I want to know what was the gap? <laughs> Obviously, yes. a lot of, um, life happening, you know, huge things happen in your life. Yeah. Of one book to the next. Yes. So, well, thank you for thank you for waiting and still being there after this huge gap. <laughs> but, um, it was ten years actually between between books, and there were definitely a gestational period. I mean, quite literally, because yeah. I, have a, I have a just turned eleven year old daughter and a six year old, so that explains wow. probably a big part of of what was happening during that gap. Um, and uh, so I became a mother. And I became a human motherland. <laughs> and um, well, after after Born Confused first came out, I spent uh, a couple of years um, pretty much solid, you know, doing events for it and readings and things like that. Um, in 2000, it came out in 2002, and then in 2004, the band I was in in London and the that bandmate Adam, who I'd um, been in a band with in New York, we released a book track album of songs connected to the book called When We yes. Were Twins. And then we were doing kind of gigs and events around um, that. Actually, when we did a sort of second launch event in New York, I was like eight months, seven months pregnant, eight months pregnant with my first daughter and had to oh, like, angle the microphone you know, <laughs> quite strongly <laughs> to be able to fit my to fit my belly, um, you know, to belly in the space. And yeah. um, then I was also I also adapted Born Confused for uh, into a script twice for two different production companies. Um, mm. The rights are back with me now, but um, but I did the two scripts then. Actually, the first one I started working on when my first daughter was ten days old. So that was that was interesting. Oh, <laughs> Doing gosh. conference calls while like you know you're like in a maternity bra and you're trying to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. But it was it was great, too, because I feel like it kept me connected to my previous self. Like, I didn't have to make a huge split and then try to find my way again, in a way. Anyways, mm. that script, the first draft of that script was horrible. Uh, and I would not care to share it. But it was actually a good experience, like, having something like that to do with yeah. the outside world and with kind of my, you know, writing and all. Um, and anyways, I, I, pl I played around with several different ideas for books during those years. And I felt like a real self-imposed pressure to to write something completely different. I think maybe I felt like I have to prove to myself I can write about other characters. But then I just started really missing Dimple too much. And um, part of it might have even been becoming a mother, because I, I felt almost maternal towards her, like, is she OK? What's she doing? Where is she? Who's she hanging out with? What's going on? And um, you know, the only way to find out is to write it, because mm -hmm. that story didn't exist yet. And um, and it became compellingly clear that Bombay is where I was going to find her in the second book. And it felt like a natural next step and next city for these characters to be in. And I think, again, becoming a mother really crystallized my desire to know this city better because it's the city where my mother was born. My brother was born there. My parents met in medical school there. They had their whole courtship there, their marriage there. And um, it was a place that, you know, it means so much to some of the people who mean the most to me, and I barely knew it. I mean, I lived there a couple of years as a baby. I was born in Boston, then we moved back to Bombay, then came back to the States. Um, mm -hmm. And we had visited a few times when I was growing up, but mostly I was staying with grandparents, which was fantastic, but I never kind of really explored the city. Although for mm -hmm. me, that's that connection, that whole relationship that Dimple has with her grandfather, Dadaji, um, we didn't have it through a camera, but we, we had that relationship, my grandfather and I did, and that when I think of India, I picture him and I picture these, you know, the pale blue airmail stationery he would write me letters on yeah. and, and that kind of thing. And, um, and yeah, so I, I, I really wanted to 
to connect to that place. And it felt also important as, like, to know that history, maybe even as something to be able to share with our daughters. Um, but that was quite a challenge because with Born Confused, I drew on the years I'd lived in New York and I'd lived in New York for, you know, nearly a decade. So kind of almost no research was required at all for that book. And Bombay, I didn't know at all. And I, I actually, you know, went to Bombay in search of my story. I had an outline. I, did, I made three trips to Bombay um, for this book, for Bombay Blues, uh, two weeks each time. I thought I was only going to make one, but obviously that was very naive. <laughs> yeah. And um, and it was a tricky thing to organize because I had, you know, my two daughters by then. The first trip I made, my little one was one in a few months, and my older one had just turned five. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah, so they were, I know, and now they're 11 and 6. So Jeez. they were traveling abroad um has its hassles already but to <laughs> juggle two small very small children well they were yeah they were home with their daddy and my you know different points with my parents and all but okay but that was difficult actually to kind of organize the whole thing and you know yeah. but I, th I think i was so convinced i would go once for two weeks get my story and then you know be at home in london writing it mm -hmm. which i probably had to think or i would never have done it you know, yeah. if I knew if someone had told me it's going to take you more than three years solid, um, you know, to do the book and the album I did to accompany it, accompany it, I might not have have even begun. It might have just felt like, oh, I can't possibly do that. Um, I think sometimes it's it's good to be a little bit naive when you embark on something, and then then you're already yeah. in it, and you just kind of you know go with what has to be done. Um, so that was a, it was an amazing experience, and. Every time I got there, and on day two, my entire outline flew out the window because nothing yeah. goes to plan generally, but especially in Bombay, it seemed like, you know, nothing was going to plan. And um, and then ultimately that became largely what the book is about, about the unmapped, the unanticipated, the unplanned, and what happens when you drop your map. Dimple literally drops her map, and I guess metaphorically, and for me, I had to do that. As a mother, I had to do that because you have to you know, you're back to zero. Once you have children, you have to kind of um, bring together your old life with your new one. And mm -hmm. um, writing the book, I had to do that because every time I went there, the story changed. Yeah. Like every person I met, every place I visited. So that book was written completely out of order. Every time I came back from a trip, um, it was basically like writing the pieces and then trying to put them in an order that started to make sense. Oh, geez. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was well, different I... than the first time around. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, you're having to learn about a whole new topography landscape yes, and um, and how it connects with you um, as a person, as a legacy. Yeah. Like, this is you relearning or learning for the first time yeah. um, India yes. in, in so many different ways. And it felt very um, important to get it right, although Dimple doesn't need to know everything about Bombay. I felt like I had to always know more than her. And then... Yeah. That's one of the reasons my first draft was like hugely overwritten because I think I had to prove to myself that I had to earn my right to write about this place. I kind of felt like I was being granted access and I didn't want to mess up. And then I I spent a big part of the process peeling information away from, from Dimple that I had put in to show myself I knew it and then I took it away from her or I would have her misinterpret things or that sort of thing intentionally, but I didn't want to do it because I was actually <laughs> misinterpreting yeah things too much you know what I mean okay. so in that I also went every setting in the um, book I I went to so like I kind of have you know walked on all those little lanes in the fishing villages gone to those temples um, in Victoria Terminus I laid down on my back in the middle of the train station to get the shot that Dimple gets in that scene um, yeah I with a friend I jumped the barrier at Juhu Beach after curfew and ran up the beach for a scene that involves that later so um, it was really fun. It was like the whole the whole time it felt like I was on a treasure hunt, although I wasn't sure, you know, I guess I was seeking my story. I didn't know what the treasure was, but then, of course, as with most things, the actual seeking was the treasure, that experience. So Sounds like you did your own stunts for this book. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell my breeze got really in depth there. Yeah. Well, I... This uh, time around, we learn more about... Um, you kind of shape or fill in the identities of Dimple's parents, which I think is super important. Um, you know, in the first book, she's kind of sees them as 
kind of a hassle, but she understands. More understanding is happening in this book. We kind of get the really loving and close and intimate portrait of these two people who have their own history, their own identity, and it was really comforting to have them filled out like that. Um, any reflection on your own parents? I remember the uh, the picture in the beginning. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's their wedding photo. Yes. Yeah, and actually the first in the hardcover edition of Born Confused, it's a photograph of my mother in a sari taking a self-portrait. And then yeah. this one is their wedding photo. And they're, you know, my parents... I'm very, 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 very close to my friend. Oh, there's my mom and daddy. <laughs> and <Bombay. laughs> and um, it's, I had, you know, every year my mother would say, just write something for us for our birthday. Because I, I, they knew I wanted to do it and I didn't have any confidence. And they always, and my brother as well, they always had faith in me, even when I had none in myself. And I think that's a huge reason that I was able to actually, you know, do something like and I'm actually mm -hmm. able to build faith in myself because they had so much of that and so every year they would say this and and I would struggle to put together something and then finally and by coincidence the both books were coming out in September and my mother father and brother are all born in September so oh, that's like, auspicious yes so for <laughs> me these are like they're those birth I'm catching up on all those birthday presents <laughs> I did, yeah. with you know like a thousand pages to catch up on all the years where I wasn't able to do it um, yeah so with the parents, the yeah, there, I think my closeness to them is a big reason I wanted to tell these stories. I wanted to honor my family and know more about the places they were from and and you know the actual places these anecdotes I heard growing up had taken had taken place. So there's this is this is actually true. There's a part in Bombay Blues where Dimple talks about how her father takes her to breach candy to show her the rock where he and the mother first kissed. And that I actually did with my father in 2008 and we went to breach candy and I have it on film. It's just adorable. Cause I was getting, I, I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to finally see where the action began. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and then we couldn't find the rock. He was sort of like, I think it was here. The video ended up being this whole thing of my father saying, I think the rock was here. No, maybe it was here. Cause obviously the, the, this area had changed. It was really kind of just seaside and, and rocks sure. at the time that they were there. And now there's a park that's been built. There's a fence that separates the rocks from the park area. And then at one point, my father was just looking around with this gentle smile. And then he looked at me and he said, well, he said, the rock may be gone, but the emotions remain, which is just, <laughs> so that's, that's in the, that's, you know, that's the absolute truth. That's in the, that's in the book. And a lot of my parents' backstory um, is the backstory of the Lalas in the book. So my parents, you know, they met out of, they had an out of caste love marriage. It was kind of a scandal in my father's village in Gujarat. It wasn't, at, it was accepted much more by my mother's family in Bombay. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, the medical school part of the story, the village elders from my father's village bringing in girls to try to entice him to come back and marry someone from his own, his own <laughs> culture. <clears throat> that's all, <clears throat> that's all drawn from their story. Um, but it was really amazing to go and be in the setting, you know, where these stories had taken place. And the first trip I made to Bombay, um, my my parents actually came in different combinations on those three trips and would go visit family. Um, my mother was in Pune for one visit with her brother. But the first visit, we came together. My brother was in, my, sorry, my mother went to Pune and my father stayed in Bombay. And um, we went together and, you know, saw the the route to the place where they got married and walked mm -hmm. on Juhu Beach together. And he told me like what it had been like when he was there. And that was incredible. And that really, um, that really set the tone for all my experiences after because Bombay is a very layered city. And I had, you know, this layer of family history and then the layer of what I remembered as a child and my grandparents, and then the layer I was experiencing, you know, during the research process. And um, it was just wonderful to be able to see these places with the very people Close who were from there. The people yeah. who really surprised me in this book were um, the the parents didn't surprise me, although I was, I'm was i always very happy to spend time with the Lalas on, I think it's what you said, I feel very comforted whenever they're in a scene or on the page, I feel like, you know, my mommy and daddy are there, they got my back. <laughs> the characters who surprised me were the aunt and the uncle in Sangeeta. And um, that's yeah. not really based on, my mother doesn't have a sister. That's, that's okay. kind of, you know, it's a fictitious thread. 
And this is funny because when I started the writing process for for the book, I really was dragging my feet. I was not looking forward to writing those characters at all. And what's really funny is that, you know, I, I had real preconceptions about them, which seems incredible because they were made up by me. <laughs> but I already was thinking I'm not going to relate to these people at all. I'm not going to relate to this this, you know, girl who's having an arranged marriage and who's living with her parents and her parents are making her do, you know, I had this whole kind of uh, bias against them. And then they really surprised me. And uh, as I, you know, kind of gave them my time, they started to kind of lead me places where I didn't expect we'd be going. And, you know, for example, the whole revelation the aunt makes to Dimple in the kitchen in the mango mm-hmm. pickle scene, that revelation was made to me and while writing the kitchen scene. I was kind of writing it and I was like, oh my God. You know, it's, <laughs> I had no idea. Now it makes sense. And there were a lot yeah. of things like that where by just sticking with them, it really feels like you're channeling another ent- creature's story or you're channeling your own story through that creature. But um, that was really exciting. That They ended up being some of the most um, rewarding characters to write. So. No, I could tell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I, oh, gosh. Um well, okay, I'm not going to, because they just came out, and so I'm not going to, like, dive deep into it. Um, I can spoil the hell out of some Born Confused. <laughs> People should have read it by now. <laughs> um, but this, Bombay Blues, has, you recently won the South Asian Book Award, and that is awards for children's literature and young adult. Um, 2015, tell me, walk me through that email or that call or that nomination oh, and then like how you found out. It was and... very exciting. I actually found out on Twitter and we, oh. we had gone, yeah, I was, Jeez. I was so reluctant to get on any social media at all, but you know, for that alone, I'm kind of glad, I'm glad that I did. Yeah. Um, we had gone away, like my husband and my daughters and I had, had gone away for four or five days and. I just turned my phone off. I didn't bring a computer. You know, we knew everybody was okay who needed to be okay. And Mm -hmm. when I turned it back on after coming back, I suddenly saw like I'd been tagged in some of these, these tweets and I kept thinking, what? (laughs) So I recommend you turn off your phone every now and then for four days and see, see what happens. Amazing things can happen (laughs) when you're not checking. Um, Yeah, that was really exciting. So the, the awards, the the ceremony was held in Madison, Wisconsin this October, and it was at the um, 44th annual conference on South Asia. And Mm -hmm. I was amazed. I didn't know there was a conference on South Asia that started, you know, in 1971, if I'm doing the math, I think I am, in the US. Yeah, it's actually the largest in the world, the most attended in the world. And it's four days of um, events. Sorry? Yeah, it's at University of Madison, Wisconsin. And um, I don't know if it changes location no, I think it's there. I think it's always there. And people come from all over the, the world who have an interest in this area, you know, professors, um, writers, lecturers, etc. And it's just four days of, of all kinds of events. And the awards are part of that. Um, so the, the book awards get given, the ceremony is, you know, kind of in the midst of, of all of this. And that was really exciting. Um, I didn't actually have time to, to go to many of the other events. But while I was yeah. there, I got to... Um, I got to guest teach um, an Asian American studies literature class at the university. Um, I got to visit a fantastic um, group of high school, three groups of high school students um, in Sun Prairie, taught by the amazing Eric Piotrowski, fantastic Mm -hmm. teacher, and um, did an interview with KSUN um, TV and radio and got to meet people there. It was really neat because I've never been anywhere remotely there in, in the U.S., so dare I use the word, it was a very exotic trip for me. <laughs> and, and you know, I had no idea that... I heard that about Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, because now that I've been living in, in London for 15 years, the U.S. has started to seem very tantalizing as a, as a place to discover, whereas when I lived in the States, I was always very excited at the idea of going, you know, else to Europe or to India or elsewhere. Yeah. Um, and that particular Madison is just incredible. Like I haven't, I haven't really been in Sun Prairie. All those places were great. Madison itself is on an isthmus, which is a word I had never said out loud before <laughs> October. And I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly, but you know, I think so. yeah. 
there's water yeah. on both sides. You have, you know, like the, you see kind of people sailing and stuff. And then there's great jazz music venues, um, yeah. great food, great restaurants, great wine bars. Um, and then all the buzz of kind of, you know, campus town as well. Yeah. And then in addition, there were these 800 plus people who were there for this conference. So the yeah. entire experience just felt, um, it felt like, you know, so many of the things that I loved all in this one place, you know, music, food, and talking about culture and writing, yeah. et cetera. So that was very exciting. And it was very, it was very, uh, it was, it was a very nice, you know, surprise to turn on my phone and see that and then get to meet all these lovely, lovely people. Of course. Yeah. And then to like get to teach a newer generation of people who are discovering, you know, different perspectives in literature. Yeah, that's really, that's exciting, yeah. It's really exciting when you're in a space like that and you can, you can feel the hunger that, yeah. you know, a lot of these people have to kind of discuss and explore and discover all of these things. So that was, that was great. That was like a, you know, major vitamin shot to the system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> and I was born confused until I learned to. And I was born confused until I learned to. Lean in a little nearer and let me whisper into your ear. Is this everything and nothing burning under my skin? A stranger or a saint? And well, have you got a minute or a lifetime to tell? Well, I.